Okay, so here I have, you know, we're working on the Khan Academy exercise called fractional exponents. And I have 25 over 81 raised to the one half power. Well, I know, but it says to the negative, there's a negative sign here. Well, I know that one half means take the square root of something. So if I were to just simply say taken to the one half power, what would that look like? Well, let's to really know this, let's put it into, you know, our calculator here and let's put 25 over 81 and let's just raise that to the one half power. Okay, so 25 to the 81 raised to the one half power, what it did was it took the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. Square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 81 is 9. So when we take the square root of a fraction, where the base is a fraction, we're just applying the exponent to the top and the bottom of the fraction separately. But what would happen if we took that same problem and instead of making this the one half power, we made it to the negative one half power. Well, let's analyze. What happened? What did it do? We got the same answer kind of, but what's different? The numerator became the denominator, the denominator became the numerator. So what does this mean? Well, what it's saying is, you know, I guess it's saying you should take this and inverse it and invert it. Invert it. Well, that's really weird. So let's talk about this, what, what this means. If we were to take a, a number, let me just take a regular number here. Let's take three squared. Okay, now what would happen if I change that to, let's going to change it to 3 to the negative 2 power. What would that be 3 to the negative 2 power? I want to think about this. What did this turn into? This took, you know, and put the 81 over the 25 and then took the square root of it. Right, raised it to the one half power, which is the square root of it, so that it was equal to the square root of 81 over the square root of 25. So what did that negative sign do? The negative sign said invert this. Take this fraction and move this to the denominator. The numerator goes to the denominator. The no denominator goes to the numerator. So in this case, if I took the 3, how would I do that? This isn't a fraction. Well, I can think about it as a fraction, 3 over 1 to the negative 2 power. Let's think about what that would be. Negative, okay, so if I did the same thing where I moved the numerator into the denominator, the denominator into the numerator, and I change this to a positive, I have 1 third squared. So 1 third squared, well, we saw that we can just take this top now and square it. So that's 1 squared over 3 squared, right? We just apply this exponent to the top and bottom of a fraction. That's 1 times 1. That's equal to 1 times 1 over 3 times 3, which is equal to 1 ninth. Is that true? Is this equal to 1 ninth? Well, it kind of makes sense, but let's test it out. 3 to the, oops, sorry, to the negative 2 so, oh boy, Mr. T's got bad typing skills today. 3 to the negative 2 power. And yes, it does. So the negative sign, here's the trick to remember. The negative sign says invert the base. Take the base and invert it. Hmm. Let's think about what that would mean. What if I had a fraction? and I had x squared over, I don't know, y squared. But what if I had this one in, in, as a negative? How would I rewrite that to think about this? And let's, let's do that one together. Let's think about this. So this is equal to, well, this is now 1 over x squared, right? If I use this rule where I see a negative, so I inverse this, and so instead of being x over 1, it becomes 1 over x raised to the second power, divided by y squared. Well, how, how in the world would I do that, right? Well, what it turns out is that 
this is really x over 1, right, times 1 over y squared. That's another way to write this. And, and if I were to raise this to the negative 2 power, then use this rule that we just applied, then what would happen is I would, you know, I would want to put this as 1 over x squared, right, or 1 over x to the second power, which is 1 squared over x squared. That's 1 over x squared. So that is, I'm rewriting here this term right here. Be careful that you don't do this because we might just think, hey, we can do this and then try dividing. And well, what would happen if we did that? Well, we'll see in a minute, okay? So 1 over x squared, and then remember it's being divided by y squared. Well, this is right where we were, you know, before. Y, 1 over y squared. So what is that going to look like? Well, if you did this, then you would inverse and multiply, and y squared would end up in the numerator. Tricky, tricky, tricky. And why would we be dividing? Remember what we did here? We rewrote this and put it as a fraction being multiplied by 1 over y squared. So how would I really, really think of this? Well, I want you to watch close so we're not making any mistakes. This is indeed x to the negative 2 power, which is 1 over x to the second power. And it is indeed saying divide by y squared, but it's not saying, it is not saying divide by 1 over y squared. It is saying divide by y squared. So if we had 1 over x squared, and instead of, oops, hold on, let me get that clean here. Instead of thinking as dividing by 1 over y squared. If I just said it's divided by y squared, and now I use my rule that I remember dividing fractions, I can take this inverse and multiply it. I would have 1 over x squared times 1 over y squared. So now I have 1 over x squared y squared. So a shortcut that people learn is just to take this and move it in the denominator and make the exponent positive. That's the shortcut that people learn. All right, Anything with a negative sign can be moved to the denominator and made positive. So we end up with 1 over x squared y squared. So let, let's try another one like that. What if I had x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 2. Holy cow, let's break this down. Well, what's this first one? This first we just saw is 1 over x squared, right? Now we invert it here because of that negative sign, and then we square it. And that is going to be times, well, this has to be inverted too. Oh, I'm sorry. And it's divided by, and it's divided by, and this is y to the negative 2. How would we do that? Well, we would rewrite it as 1 over x squared and times, oh, I'm sorry, let's just still with divide for a second. I've got to fix this. Because this is the negative 2 power, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over y squared. So I have 1 over x squared. I can square the 1 and square the x, but 1 squared is just 1. So I have 1 over x squared divided by, and I do the same thing here, 1 squared is 1, and y squared is y squared. So now I'm saying, hey, 1 over x squared divided by 1 over y squared. Remember, when I divide fractions, I inverse and multiply. So 1 over x squared times y squared over 1, and that's equal to y squared over x squared. So what did I do? I recognized that this had a negative exponent, and so I, I could have just moved it up here in the numerator and made it positive, and this had a negative exponent, and I could have just moved it down and made it you know, positive as well. So this is very important understanding about negative exponents. Negative exponents, they take the, the inverse of it, and when it laid out in fractions, you can actually just kind of remember this rule. And if you don't remember the rule, 
then work your way through it until you do remember the rule. Okay? Let's go back to that problem in Khan Academy. Oops. Sorry. Here we go. So remember what we did. This was negative, so we turned this into 81 over 25, and then we take the square root, or the we raise the one half power, which is the same thing as taking the square root, and we got 9 over, oops, sorry, 9 over 5. Okay? Let's try the next one. Now we need to take the cube root of 1 eighth, but notice that it is to the negative one third. So the first thing we would do is we would invert this and make it eight over one. And then take the cube root of eight. So what is the cube root of eight? Well, that's the number that would, that's, that's the base that would be, you know, multiplied three times to get to eight. You know, the cube, base times itself three times to get to eight. So the cube root of eight, I know that to be two. But if I didn't know that, what would I do? I'd use my calculator. And I would say, what is my, let's do this, what is my, oops, sorry, I don't want to actually do that. Let me go back. Let me do control arrow, which gives me now the chance to do the cube root of 8. Enter. And that raises it. And that is the, that is the answer that is 2. I could also write it as 8 to, oops, 8 to the 1 third power. And that's the same exact thing, right? 8 to the 1 third power is the same thing as this. Okay, so um, because it's negative, I inverted, and our answer is going to be 2. Okay, I'll do one more like this. What about this one? This says take the square root of the top and the bottom. Well, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 9 is 3. It's a positive exponent, so I don't do, I need to do any kind of inverting or anything. I just take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So my answer is going to be 1 third. And here I am going to invert, right? So I get 16 over 1, and then take the fourth root over that. So if you didn't know what the fourth root of this is, you could use your calculator and say, what is, oh, let's say 16 to the 1 fourth power and I get 2 and that makes sense because 2 to the third power got me 8 and if I multiplied it by 2 again I get to 16 so 2 to the fourth power is 16 16 to the fourth the fourth the one fourth power of 16 is going to be 2 and another way to write it is the fourth root of 16 would be 2 um, I could just put it in like this heck if I'm struggling with these concepts that's what I would do so I would go the I'd put 16 in here, and I would raise it to the negative 1 fourth power. Wait a minute, was that 6? No, it was 1 over 16. Dang it. 1 over 16. Raise to the negative 1 fourth power is, there it is, 1. And I still get 2. Okay, so there's my answer, 2. Okay. That is how those are done. I think you can figure the rest of these out on your own.